I love you, Lord. You are my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my savior. My God is my rock in whom I find protection. He is my shield, the strength of my salvation, and my stronghold. I will call on the Lord, who is worthy of praise, for he saves me from my enemies. And for this, O oh Lord, I will praise you among the nations, and I will sing joyfully to your name.
You know, at 9 o'clock, 9.30 every Sunday morning, we have a Bible study hour. We have five adult classes, one taught by an ordained deacon, and four taught by ordained pastors. And so I just so much appreciate John and Emily Brooks. John and Emily are very, very faithful and just such a blessing in our church. And Tom and Sandy Close, and uh, Manuel and Diana Martinez. And uh, these three are going to come and share just a word of testimony. And if you're not in a Sunday school class at 9.30 on Sunday morning, you can decide during this hour which one of these classes you're going to be in because we have, now Manuel teaches, uh, and his wife, Diana, they teach a Spanish-speaking class. So I couldn't very well be in that class or I couldn't understand anything they were saying. But, but if you know some people who are Spanish speakers, please invite them to come and be a part of that Bible study time. And then uh, the other classes all speak English. And so uh, Brother John is going to come first and then Brother Tom will come up immediately after him and Brother Manuel after him. These are three Baptist preachers and I've given them 10 minutes each so, uh, don't get too nervous. Okay, all right, Brother John. Pastor, I don't mean to uh, change your words here, but you said uh, we was going to give a word. I didn't give him one, uh, a word. <laughs> a bunch of words. A bunch of words, yes, okay. yes. Well, I'm glad to be here, that's for sure. And all the things that God has done in my life and you know, I, my wife, just like all of us, we, we put together uh, information that we like to cover. So I don't want to get out of control here. So I had to uh, leave me a rabbit trail, so to speak. But anyway, I want to uh, start off with Ephesians 3 and 20. It says, Now unto him who is able to do, do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power 
that is at work within Amen. us. His power, the Holy Spirit is his, Lord, his power. And his power has changed my life, transformed me over time. And so I'm going to give you just a little glimpse of my life, which uh, hasn't always been what I wanted it to be. But I finally came back to know the Lord when I was about 45 years old. And uh, I have never been the same. And he's able to do immeasurably more. I mean, I mean, he's young. Well, I want to start off just to let you know that I was born in Thomasville, Georgia. Uh, I grew up there. Uh, and I, when I was 11 years old, I made a profession of faith at a, a Baptist church. And our, the pastor there, he uh, wore black rim glasses. He was preaching on uh, hell. And I was sitting down there in the front. And he scared me to death. So I came forward and made a profession of faith, okay? And I really did. For, for many years, I really tried to do what the Lord wanted me to do. But of course, like everything else in, in life, you know, you get caught up in other things. Well, I grew up in, my mother was a Christian. My father, well, he was an alcoholic. And I really never knew my father. My, I, I don't know who my father, I mean, I know who my father was, but he was not my, he was my biological father, but not my spiritual father. And when the Lord came into my life, he was my father. He's been my father ever since. Yeah. And I'm so thankful for that. But my father, I mean, he, he just left a hole, a, a, a hole in my heart. And uh, we lived, we were very poor in those days, okay? And lived in the housing projects in Georgia. Let me tell you, back in those days, housing projects were not like they are here today. They can really be areas of drugs and all that kind of stuff. Things were a little bit different back then. But anyway, it was, it was a difficult life growing up and and uh, so, anyway, we moved around a great deal because my father was in the Air Force. We moved from Alabama, Georgia, uh, Florida, California. I lived in California five years, and I'm glad I got out of that outfit. But anyway, anyway, uh, it, it was really uh, overwhelming. But we finally moved back uh, to uh, Georgia, where, like I said, I was born. And in high school, I was captain of the football team and the wrestling team and went to, went to state in uh, wrestling in second. I was in the 191-pound division and played second in the state of t uh, Georgia at that time. Okay, so, but, but what that reason I'm telling you this is because all those things added up to, to allow me to witness to football players on our team and the wrestling team. And I, I witnessed to a lot of them back in those days. And, and, and at that time, I'd take my Bible even to, to uh, uh, school. And so uh, everybody respected me because, of course, when you're in, you're in athletics and everything, people looked up to you, but it, it opened so many doors for me at that time. But after attending high school, I uh, attended college one semester, and I was on the verge of flunking out, so I decided, hey, this, one, this isn't for me at this point in time anyway. And so I joined the Air Force. I went down to the recruiter's office, didn't tell anybody, came home and told my mother, Mom, I'm going, to, uh, I'm going into the Air Force. Because my dad was in the Air Force, so I figured it was a pretty good place to go. So anyway, I went into the Air Force, and uh, it was uh, it was a time where you know uh, I enjoyed the Air Force, but I joined during the Vietnam War. You got to understand that, and, and everybody else was getting inducted, and I was dumb enough to believe I'm just go down here and sign up. But anyway, fortunately, I, I went to Vietnam and Taiwan at the at the latter part. But you know, my last year in the, in the uh, Air Force, I got married. And upon the discharge from the Air Force, I worked in electrical uh, field in AT&T, and they ultimately brought me and Emily up here. But, uh, uh, and I, I was going, at that time, I was going to uh, St. Mary's University, got a degree in math, computer science, and, and so on. But all that time, when all these things were going good for me, I forgot about the Lord. And I wasn't paying attention to what he was wanting from me. And so my marriage disintegrated. My wife at that time, she divorced me. I didn't divorce her. She divorced me, seriously, because I didn't, I didn't I want to get a divorce, but she did. And so I got, we got divorced. And, and so, uh, but here's the interesting thing at that point in time. When I went in the Air Force in 1966 until 1983, 18 years I want you to know I never even thought about the Lord. I never even gave the Lord a, I didn't go to church. Well, I did go to church. I went to a Catholic church because they didn't require anything out of you except to go and give, give you your, your tithe. And, and I, yeah, seriously, back in those days, I mean, but anyway, I went to a Catholic church. He even got married by a Catholic priest. 
He smoked a cigar and drank and all that other stuff, I'm telling you. But folks, I mean, but I wasn't walking with the Lord. I just kind of forgotten about the Lord. But those 18 years, just kind of, when I think back on, on not even paying attention for those 18 years to God, I just, I don't know what was going on. All I know is after, after my divorce, uh, I encountered my lovely wife, Emily. We've been married 37, 38 years now. And uh, she came into my life and we were, at and moved, both of us, she worked for at and we both moved up here to Dallas and DeSoto. And uh, at that point in time, things changed. And my wife wanted to go to church. She would come out of a Catholic background. She didn't really know the Lord. She'd gone to church, so but she really didn't know the Lord. But anyway, we went to a revival there at Hampton Road. We started going to Hampton Road Baptist Church, and there was a revival there. And I committed my life at that point in time to the Lord. I came back to the Lord, and Emily got saved in that revival down there, okay? And it was shortly thereafter, they asked me, and I, because I was serving in the church and doing things, they asked me to, to take over the college and careers uh, there at Hampton Road. And at that time, hey man, I had 60, on summer, I had 65 people in, in our class. That's amazing, you know, because it was a big church at that time. It was over a thousand people. And so anyway, God began to move in my life, change everything that was going on. And, you know, and what I would like to say is God is always faithful. You know that? Even when we're not faithful, God doesn't kick you out. He, you know, it's like throwing out the, the baby with the bathwater. You don't, God doesn't do that. He's faithful always, even though that was unfaithful and everything I did. But as I uh, began to do that, uh, uh, believe it or not, uh, Bear Creek, this very church, Bear Creek was, um, we used to have a balcony, by the way, up here. You may not know it, but we used to have a balcony up there in the early days. And we came down and we uh, stayed here and for, for a while. And, uh, you know, God was doing great things here at, at Bear Creek at that time. Because when we came down here, the, the church was fixing to close its doors because there wasn't enough people in the church. So 20 families from Hampton Road Baptist Church agreed to come down here and facilitate growth. And when we came down here, within, I say, two years, it had grown to 200 people. God was using everybody that came down, 20 families, a lot of them deacons, former deacons, that kind of thing. And so God was doing a magnificent thing here. And uh, we just enjoyed it so much. And so uh, in 1991, where, how much time have I got? No, never mind. In 1991, when, during the Iraqi war, uh, I learned to pray for my son. My son was in a recon unit with the Marine Corps. He was in Fallujah. He was in the, in the very early days of the Iraqi war. And I didn't think he was coming back. And you know, I pray, I learned to pray then. I used to get down on the end of the bed during the night and pray for long periods of time. I never even used to pray five minutes. If I prayed five minutes, that was setting the world's record. I could pray for three hours and never run out. And that's what God can do in a man's life. He did that to me, okay? And I'm forever thankful for that. And so for those, for that time, over a period of time, I was, I would be uh, going to work downtown and I'd be driving down there and uh, I was so full of the Lord then. I mean, I never, I mean, I could even believe what God could do these kinds of things with a person. But he did it to me. I can't say it speak for anybody else, but he did it for me. And I was so full of God at that time, it was just unbelievable. I would drive downtown and have my little truck. I had a little red truck, you know. I don't have a big truck like you guys out here do. But I had a little red truck, and I dro drove downtown. And all the way down there, I'd be playing my Christian music and, and just be weeping. I'd weep like you wouldn't believe. And I'd come back home, and Emily would say, what are you doing back home? I didn't even go to work. She said, what are you doing back home? I said, I couldn't see. I was crying so much all the way down there. God was all over me. And uh, I mean, and so anyway, I, I, I can make this thing go on forever, but I, I don't want to do that right now. Anyway, uh, during that time, by the way, the Lord brought my son back. He wasn't harmed in, in, in being down there in the force uh, special operations that he was in. And I just thanked God over and over. But I learned how to pray at that point in time. And Emily and I at that time met 
a pastor from uh, Victory Outreach. He came out of San Jose, California. And uh, we met him and uh, we joined his. We, I left, at that time, I left, Emily and I left and went to work with Victory Outreach. And they dealt with pimps, prostitutes, homosexuals, drug addicts, you name the, the dredges of the, of, the, of the earth. But I, I loved it so much and I grew up in a poor environment. The projects. And so I kind of identified with them and didn't really like that environment, but God changed my heart in that too. And I loved, we loved serving them, but I served there a number of years. And uh, while attending a prophecy conference met during that time, I was at the DFW airport. I was sitting there and Tim LaHaye, uh, ministry, he was speaking up there and he said, uh, Isaiah 6 and 8, who shall I send and who will go for us. He was quoting out of Isaiah 6 and 8. And when he said that, who shall go and who shall I send? And he said, send me, Lord, send me. And when he said that to me, I sat there I, probably 15 minutes and cried because I knew God called me into the ministry full time to do things that I, again, I, I didn't even understand. And so, uh, and uh, 1995, as we move along, in 1995, I started a, uh, we started a home Bible study at our house. And I want you to know, God was, a lot of it was her family, but we, working with at and and what have you, she worked in Waxahachie, I worked downtown. We began to invite anybody that would come. And you know, we grew. We grew uh, to over 30 people in our, at home every, every week. And those people were so faithful every week. Finally, we decided, well, we got, and, that, and the people were saying, look, well, why don't we start a church? Well, we already were a church, okay? But we started a church and we moved down into uh, Grace Temple. And we're down there and, and ministered down there in an uh, Oak Cliff area and what have you. And it was just uh, amazing the things that God was doing. And so uh, I, during all that time, I was going to the seminary. I got to end up getting my master's and then get my uh, D-men, which is a, the doctorate. And I, every night I was working on, on trying to uh, find out more about the Lord. I mean, I was reading his word like you wouldn't believe. But anyway, I'm, I'm going to curtail it there, okay? I went on to Bowles Baptist Church later on because uh, we, we were over there three years and taught there and, and was a pastor there. And then finally because Emily's mother came and she was in hospice and we were in this situation where I just really felt like it was God calling me to retire. And so at that point I retired, but from then we went to uh, Community Baptist Church in Ferris. We came back over here. And by the way, uh, poppies, uh, poppies, I had the opportunity to bring them back to the church because they weren't going to church back in those days. And so some great and mighty things, okay? But anyway, those, that's kind of a capsulized version. I could have gone on for years, you know, but I want to tell you one thing. I'm going to put this mic down for a minute. I hope you can hear me. You know, this is Word of God, right? How many say this is Word of God? Amen. How many of y'all ever had the Lord speak to you? Yes. I mean, verbally? Yes. Okay. Well, I've never had God speak to me verbally, okay? But He speaks to me constantly. And this, if you'll open up his mouth, he's got a word for you. And if you're not studying his word, I think you're not living up to the responsibility. Okay? I'm saying that because I know this thing means everything to me. Yeah. It means everything to me. Amen. And I write so many notes in my Bible, you kind of wonder, well, is it God speaking or who is it? <laughs> but I'm telling you, he was talking to me constantly. He talks to me constantly through this. I love the Word of God, and I, if you're not solidly in the Word of God, I would just say one thing, especially to you young folks. You folk, young folks, commit your life to the Lord, study His Word, and God will do magnificent things in your life. And I'll conclude with this. All my children, my four children, they're all saved. Uh, they're all in the ministry. One is the executive director of Gore Ministries in San Antonio. And God is doing magnificent things in their life. So I just thank God and may he receive the glory in everything that takes place here 
and everywhere. Amen. Pastor, I've got my uh, I've got my Moses beard and my staff. <laughs> kind of feel like I'm on Mount Pisgah, um, but no snakes. So, uh, my name's Tom Close, and uh, I spent about five years as a pastor. Uh, my my ministry started, my call started when uh, I was about 13 years old. I was saved at Oats Drive Baptist Church in Mesquite, where I grew up. Now, before that, uh, I, was, uh, I would go to a Methodist church, and I used to talk to youth groups, and one time said I was saved. Uh, I, I used to be Methodist until I got saved, and the girl goes, hey, I'm Methodist. I decided I need to stop saying that uh, in those talks. But uh, I, I didn't grow up in what you would call uh, a Christian home. Now, my folks were straight and narrow. They taught me right from wrong. They took care of me, and they tried to raise me right. But uh, we got to a point where we didn't go to church. We moved to Mesquite, and a friend of mine that I played football with in junior high by the name of Gary Blair uh, invited me to a revival. Well, I had absolutely no idea what a revival was, and I knew it was at a Baptist church. The only Baptist up to that point I'd heard of was John. I knew what that outcome was, so I was a little, little leery. But I went anyway because they had hot dogs after the service, so... Um, Anything for a free meal, right? But uh, I went there, and uh, the uh, uh, the evangelist was Mickey Bonner. Uh, Brother Mickey uh, died a few years ago of a heart attack while he was preaching the Word of God. So he died doing what he loved and what God had called him to do. But um, that night, uh, after the service, I met with the pastor and and told him that uh, that I wanted to be saved. I wanted to know Jesus as my Savior, and I was uh, uh, saved that night, got baptized, and a few years after that, I, I, I felt that tugging, I guess you will, on my heart that God wanted me to do something special with my life. Now, I, I, I felt that it was preaching. I, I wanted to preach. I, you know, I, I just, uh, it was kind of one of those guys that, you know, a friend of mine used to say, you know you want to preach, when you'd rather preach than eat. <laughs> but I can tell you, I still would rather preach. You can tell I haven't been preaching much lately, Pastor. But, um, but uh, uh, I felt God calling me to some kind of, of special service. Uh, after I graduated from college, I went to East Texas State University, which is now A&M Commerce, uh, and um, got a degree in education and um, started teaching and coaching, and I was doing uh, youth work part-time at churches. And then God opened up the opportunity for me to go to Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary, where I received my master's degree, and, and uh, I actually pastored for about five years. And the thing that I learned from pastoring five years well, I'm not a pastor. <laughs> you know, God, God gave me an ability to stand before people and speak, an ability to teach. I love to preach the Word of God. I love to teach the Word of God. But um, I, I, I envy that person that is a pastor shepherd. I'm glad God sent us one. And, uh, and, and I envy that. So I thought, Lord, I, I know that pastoring is is not what you want me to do. What, what is it, God? Where, where are you sending me? So I left the pastorate and went into missionary work. Now, I said, God, I want you to send me to a place that is hostile to the word of God. And so God sent me to the Texas public school systems. And I spent 25 years, I spent 14, uh, I'm sorry, four, yeah, 14 years as a teacher and a football coach. And my last 10 years, I spent as a school administrator. I was a, an assistant principal and a principal. But you know what? It was a mission field. It, it, there were opportunities beyond what you could think. Because what, what people don't want you to understand is that when you're in a public school, if a kid approaches you and asks you, are you a Christian? 
You can tell them that you are. See, we, we've been fooled into thinking that we can't do that, but you can. Now, you can't, you can't lead the prayer. You can't lead them to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ in the classroom, but you can still make your life count in a way where somebody looks at you and says something is different about the way they operate. And so God gave me that opportunity to, uh, uh, to, to be in public schools for 25 years and, uh, and, and have the opportunity to be an influence in the lives many times of, of boys and girls, young men and women who not only did not know the Lord, but they didn't know their parents. They had ho no home life. I was telling someone today, there were kids that I, I dealt with as an administrator, 18-year-olds that turned 18 before they graduated, and their parents just kicked them out of the house. You're 18. You're not my legal responsibility anymore. We had one boy that finished his senior year living from house to house to house because his parents just up and moved. So God gave me an opportunity in the lives of of teachers in the lives of parents in the lives of students to show the love and care of Jesus Christ in, in their life. Now, that's mission work. That's, that's being a missionary. Now, I still love teaching the Word of God. I still love preaching the Word of God. But I'm glad that God gave me that, uh, that ministry to, uh, to be in that kind of environment and to share my, uh, my, my life with them. You know, one of the first verses I, I learned was, but as many as received him, to them he gives the right to become children of God. Amen. And I want to share just one final thing with you. In that scripture, what I've learned is this. Don't be deceived. We are all creations of Almighty God. Amen. But friends, we are not all children of God unless we are made righteous in that relationship that we have with Jesus Christ. Amen. And it is only by his blood and sacrifice that we are going to, to be made right. Yes. That's what it means to be righteous. I'm not righteous because of anything I've ever done, anything I've ever said. I'm righteous because God, in his sovereignty and his love for me, gave me the opportunity to accept his free Amen. gift and be righteous Amen. through Amen. Jesus Christ. So I just, uh, I just want to end my, my time in saying that to you and hope that if, uh, if you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, that even, even this time where uh, you, you've got three guys come up here and sharing their testimonies, and Pastor, if it would have been April Fool's when you told me you were going to ask three preachers to take 10 minutes, <laughs> I'd have thought you were joking. But, uh, but, but even, even today, even today, I pray that you don't leave this place without making that, taking that opportunity to let Jesus Christ speak to you and you accept his offer. You accept his free gift and become righteous before God through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I'm glad we have uh, good steps here. I was preaching one time in Mexico and I had to go up with a, a, a platform that was pretty high and all I had was little bitty stones that almost, almost fell down. But <laughs> uh, thank God for that. But uh, my time again, you know, when the Lord called me, when I was a child, and sometimes we, uh, we kind of ignore the children, they're playing around or not paying attention. But it's amazing what, what, what God can do in a child. Uh, it, it doesn't seem like they're listening, but they are. Uh, it doesn't seem like they're important, but they are. You know, God loves the children also. Uh, I was, I don't, I don't ever remember, I, I keep saying, you know, five or six years old that, uh, that uh, I came to meet the Lord. Uh, you know, Sometimes, I think it's five or six, you know, at that time you don't remember your age or anything. But anyway, I was uh, uh, very sick. You know, we were 
we were raised on a, a farm, a dairy farm, and uh, uh, we were eight kids. We all play outside, and jumping around, and you know, barefooted and everything else. Uh, it was a poor family, so you know we we had we had a lot of fun. But one day I got really sick, uh, and uh, my parents didn't have enough money to take me to the, to the hospital or the doctor. And uh, in those days, uh, some doctors made home visits, and so the doctor the doctor came, uh, Doctor Penley, I remember. He came, and we lived in Fal Furrier's out the. Uh, South Texas, and uh, we were about five, six miles out of town. And he came and uh, examined me, and he said that I had pneumonia. I didn't even know what pneumonia was. I think my parents knew, but I had fever. I was uh, delirious. I, I had all kinds of dreams and things. But uh, my mother and my family, mainly my mother and, and uh, the rest of the girls, were going to church, and I remember uh, they would take me to church and go to Sunday school to the Baptist church. Uh, that, that happened for a, a small period of time. They didn't go very often. Uh, my dad was, he said he was Catholic, but he was really nothing. He didn't go to anything. But uh, uh, I was really, really sick. And I had a, a miraculous experience at that time. My, uh, my mother would pray for me and, and she would sit you know, like any Hispanic mama, you know, she'd sit by my, 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 my bed and would, wouldn't leave me. You know, she'd go and get some food and feed me, and, but she was right there all the time. And uh, I remember that she started talking to me, and the little, little that she knew, she started witnessing to me about Christ and all of this. And as, as a child, you know, I opened my heart to the Lord, uh, you know, wide open. I didn't, you know, you don't, you don't have, the children don't have all those, problems that adults have. You know, we're so, so sophisticated, we close our mind to everything. But uh, I opened my heart to Christ, and he, he came into my life, he came into my heart. But then, after that, you know, my, my mother and my family left. I could hear the pickup, you know, they, they took off and left, and they were gone for, uh, for a while. And after that, you know, I had a, and later on, I'll probably give you my, my testimony of how I was saved, but the Lord came to me, prayed for me. I could hear him. Amen. Amen. And after, after that, he left. And by, by the time my parents came back, I was able to get up. I was able to go to the restroom. I was able to do it. You no, know, I was completely healed. Amen. But he didn't only heal my body. He healed my heart. You hear my soul. Amen. You know, as a child, you will repeat stuff, you know, in prayers and things that they teach you. You know, pray like this or say this. And my mother would teach me, you know, in Sunday school, a little time ago, when we learned a few things. And you kind of just, you know, talk to the air. But after that experience, I knew that I was talking to somebody. I knew that I was talking to God. God became so real to me. Very real. And I knew from that point on that I was going to serve the Lord. I didn't know how. We didn't go to church. We were completely out of church. But then we could uh, continue to grow and mature and so forth. And once in a while we, we'd go to church at a uh, uh, time of uh, my parents separated when I was 14 years old, 13, 14 years old, and we went to, to live in uh, Nova Laredo, which is across the river. Uh, my, my mother had some family there. We were living there. We were renting there. And I had a bunch of friends that uh, would play around at the Catholic church. Uh, we, and we'd go out there and play basketball with them and all that. And we'd go, to, we'd go to church once in a while, and they wanted me to go with them. And, and uh, the priest was very, real friendly. And he started talking to me about the Lord and about certain things or, you know, or the way they believe. But then I started witnessing to him. And I said, where did that come from? <laughs> you know, I started witnessing to him about what the Bible says. The Lord brought things to my mind. Amen. And, uh, 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 you know, it, 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 the Lord just did wonderful things in my life. Of course, all that time I was out out of church, 
Later on, you know, we, uh, we, I graduated from high school. We, I wanted to go to the service. And, you know, that was during the Vietnam War. I wanted to go to service, and you know, my mother didn't want me to, so we finally got enrolled in uh, UCC, United, uh, University of Corpus Christi. And, and uh, they convinced me because they wanted me to play, I wanted to play football. And they, you know, they, they got a, a, a tryout for me with a, with a football team. And so uh, that didn't last very long because I was injured. And, you know, I still enrolled in school and went for one year. And I'm glad I did because I met my wife there. Uh, and, and later on, a year or two later, we were married. But after we were married, uh, you know, I did go into service, uh, came out. And uh, started, uh, you know, we uh, worked in Calvary's for a while, and then I, uh, we moved to, to Corpus Christi. In Corpus Christi, we, had, we, we went to a church of, of a friend of ours that we met in, uh, in college. And there I, I started to grow, started to grow in the Lord, and started to grow in the Word. And I could always feel that calling. I'm going to serve the Lord. You know, there's a passage in scripture, and I know that in Spanish I'll probably uh, butcher it in, in English, but where Paul says that uh, he knows who he has been believed in. And the word know in, in that scripture means you know for certain. You know for certain who you believe in. Amen. And you're convinced that he's going to store your, your, your guard to what you have given him. Uh, f forever. But you know, we had, I, I continued to feel that calling. And I knew I was, I was going to serve the Lord. I was very shy. I was scared to death to get, to get in front of people. But the Lord continued to help me to grow in, in that church. I was baptized there and I continued to grow in the Lord. And I, at that time, I was working in the fire department in Corpus Christi. I worked there for five and a half years. But there came a time where it was so strong in my heart that I couldn't resist it anymore. And I know my wife was praying and I was praying. The children were small. And so I, I took off and I got in my car and went to the, to the shoreline in Corpus Christi and one of the parks there, I think it was Cole Park. And it was nobody there, it was dark. And I just looked to the ocean and started praying. I said, Lord, I don't know what you want me to do. But I, I, can't, I can't resist it anymore. You know, I surrendered to whatever you want me to do. Praise the Lord. After that, there was an opportunity to go to a Hispanic uh, Seminary or Institute in San Antonio. We went there and uh, graduated. You know, it was a four-year course. We graduated in three years. We came over here, graduated from uh, from uh, uh, University of Corpus Christi, and you know, it didn't continue. But when uh, we pastored the first church that we pastored in San Antonio, that word "no" came back to me. It was an old deacon, the only deacon that the church had. It was a truck driver uh, years ago, years past, and uh, he had an accident. You know, in South Texas, it's kind of like here. Uh, it doesn't rain for three years, and then it pours. And he was a truck driver, and he was, he was, it had been raining a lot. He went under an uh, uh, under overpass, and then, you know, it kind of dips in, and it was full of water. The truck hit the water, and he had an accident, and, and uh, he wound up in the hospital. And after after he, he got out of the hospital, they found out that there was something wrong with his heart. But I remember he used to say, Brother Martinez, I don't just believe in the Lord. I know the Lord. Praise the Lord. And, you know, I, I could go forever and tell you what, what you know, we retired uh, in uh, 2019 from, from uh, pastorate. But I think that is what's important. Not just to believe. 
to get to a point to where you know God. Yes. He's so real to you. Yes. With that experience that I had, and I think Paul was saying that because of the experience that he had with the Lord. I know who I believed in. Mm -hmm. You know, he, uh, it's, not, it's not just a, a, a state of mind. It's not a suggestion. It's real God in my life. Whether you're a child or a teenager or an adult, it's important for you to really come to know God Amen. in a real and truthful That's and right. deep way. Yes. The Lord has been beautiful in our lives. He's been good to us. The pastor is not easy. He can tell you that. All, all the, everybody's been the pastor can tell you that. Uh, you know, by the time I retired, I was kind of burned, burned out. Uh, uh, burned up, what do they call that? Burned up. <laughs> but uh, uh, it's not just the pastorate, but other things. I also worked uh, as a, a director at, uh, in uh, high school as, uh, with uh, safety and security. Uh, and it, was, it was tough, you know, doing both things. But God was good. Anywhere I was, the Lord was good. I remember said, I remember having meetings with men that would come in my office when I was in, in school. And I remember one, one of them saying, there, there's something special about this place. Just sitting here. And I said, well, nothing special about me, but it's God's presence. And I tell you, there's, there's nothing better than walking with the Lord. The Lord gave me a beautiful wife, a beautiful family. And all of them came to know the Lord. Even our youngest son, Joey, he passed away some years ago, 2008, I believe. He veered off. He got into drugs and all kinds of stuff. He grew up in church and in the Lord, but the last few years, he came to know the Lord. And he came to know in a meaningful way. We walked into his room, and you could tell that he was praying, and he was just in fellowship with Christ. And that's the kind of experience that I would recommend that you have with the Lord. Something that is real in your life. You know, I, I used to tell people when I was preaching that I could never deny God. I could never deny Christ. Amen. Not what he's so real in my life. And I used to jokingly say that it could burn my feet that I could not deny Christ. He is that real. My God is real. In my life, and it can be real in your life. And it's important that you open your heart to that Christ that died for you and me, who loves you immensely and wants to transform your life, as Paul says, from death to life. I feel like I want to pray at this time, but it's okay. Uh, Father, we thank you for your love and your care. And I ask, Lord, that you work in each one of our lives. And I ask, Lord, that you make yourself real in all of us. That we may have that experience of walking with you, talking with you, and being with you. And I thank you, Lord, for giving me that privilege to know you in that fashion. And I pray that each one of us here can come to know you that deeply and that meaningful. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Can, you, can you quote that verse in Spanish? Uh, that I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he's able to keep that which I have committed 
If you had asked me before, I would have been able to do it, right? You see, yo sé quién he creído, y estoy seguro que, I forget the rest of it, that que retendrá eso hasta el resto de mi vida. Que guardará eso. Uh, yeah, no, I don't remember the rest of that. Okay. Uh, sorry to put you on the spot like that. No, no, that's fine. Well, I appreciate that. Appreciate so much. That you appreciate the testimonies of these three men? Yeah. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Uh, now, have you decided which Sunday school class you're going to be in? Okay. <laughs> Listen, I'm serious. If you know some uh, Spanish speaking people who are not in a Bible study, Please encourage them to come, and uh, and if you know uh, uh, men or women who speak Spanish, Diana is a, a wonderful, wonderful Bible teacher. She teaches the women in Spanish, and uh, Emmanuel can uh, can teach the men in Spanish, and then Brother John, Brother Tom, they both have classes. If you're not in Sunday school, I really urge you to come. Come an hour earlier. Come at nine thirty. Be here to study the Bible in a small group setting. That's so good. But you know, the most important thing, like each of them have emphasized, is that you know Jesus. Amen. You know, uh, a lot of people live their whole life without really knowing the love of God in their life. Some people live their whole life and they don't really know love even in their own family. But I'm telling you, nobody has ever loved you like Jesus loves you. And nobody can do for you what Jesus can do for you. And I know people who say, well, I'm hopeless, I'm helpless, I, I'm just so far out. Jesus said, those are the ones I came to find. He came to seek and to save those who are lost. And uh, so I would just say to you today, Jesus loves you. Amen. Jesus loves you. And he wants to change your life and give you full meaning to your life. So I'm going to pray and then we're going to sing uh, an invitation song. Yeah. Heavenly Father, thank you for these men. And Father, I thank you for every member of this church. And I know that uh, every member is vital and important. And, but I also thank you for men that you have called to serve you in a, a ministerial way. And I thank you for these men and for their wives and their families. And I pray that you will take the testimonies that they shared, stir our hearts, challenge our hearts, and most of all, to help us be able to say from the bottom of our heart, Jesus loves me. Yes. And I know this clearly because your word tells me so. And I pray that as we sing this song of invitation, if anyone needs to come and trust you in any way, I pray that they'll do it as we stand together and as we sing. Amen. Amen.
Brother Emmanuel, Emmanuel, would you come up here for just a moment and sit down here on the front row? I'm going to let you close us in prayer in a few minutes, okay? All right, you just come on up here. And Tracy's going to play.
also be Zoomed, and it's actually going to be Dr. R.C. Sproul teaching on the holiness of God. Don't miss it, please.